What's going on everybody, my name is Jordan Fowler and in today's video we're going to look at this. This is the Loop Deck Plus editing console. We're going to see if this is still worth it in 2021 and actually if it was ever worth getting in the first place. So let's get into it. So I've been using the Loop Deck Plus for about six months now. Um, I wanted to do a video back along, but I kind of thought that it'd be better to wait and spend some time actually using it before I give my opinion and my review on it. So for those of you that aren't familiar with what an editing console is, or specifically what a Loop Deck is, they're effectively custom keyboards designed for editing photos and videos. Despite looking, you know, like DJ decks, they don't have anything to do with music. So these are designed to actually enhance your editing and all the functions that you use are now organized into categories on the loop deck um, to save you sort of hunting around in menus and drop downs in the software. You actually have it all in one place right at your fingertips. So essentially what you have is all of your control main function buttons and kind of your dials here. Um, then you have all these dials for fine tuning and getting accurate color grading and scrolling. Uh, and then you have your HSL color section where you get a scroller for each color. Um, and then all of that, along with a bunch of other random little buttons dotted here and there, you can basically set these to do whatever you want. And that really is the cool thing about this. You can literally customize every single button, every single dial and scroller to whatever you want it to be. But we'll come back to this a bit more detail later and the customization options you get with it. And I wanna do a whole nother video on the actual setup of this and how I have it customized to suit how I edit. So let's start off with the cons of the Loop Deck Plus because unfortunately there are a few, but whether they're a big deal or not is down to you and that's for you to decide. So firstly, the build quality is only okay. Um, it's kind of a little bit plasticky and doesn't feel all that sturdy. I mean, it doesn't feel like anything's gonna break. It's not, in, it's not flimsy in that sense, but it kind of for the price that you pay, it would have been nice to have something a little bit more sturdy and a little bit more sort of heavy and feels a little bit more quality to it. But overall that doesn't actually perfect the performance of it, so it's kind of one of those things. Now the next con, which is the one I actually hate the most, is cables. And for some unknown reason, Loop Deck decided that this would have to be plugged into a USB via a cable. Why they couldn't have done this with a wireless sort of USB dongle like most keyboards or mice have, I don't know. But anyway, it's just one of those things. I actually hate cables and try to hide them as best I can but it's just annoying when you get your whole setup and then you've got to have one more cable. But again, that doesn't actually affect the performance of it. It's just one of those things that's kind of a little bit annoying. It would have been nice to have it wireless to fit in with most people's setups. You know, you've got your nice wireless mouse and all that. But anyway, one of those things. So the third con is actually the price tag. Now I touched on this earlier, but the price tag that comes along with this is around 220 pounds, which for a keyboard, is quite a lot. I do think that kind of is a little bit expensive considering what you actually get and the kind of build quality from it. Um, but that's just one of these things, you know, things are expensive these days, so. Another little thing that makes this really annoying is it is an absolute dust trap. Um, I know keyboards are pretty bad in general for dust, but this thing is ridiculous. Like, And because the dials and the scrollers are so sort of fiddly and awkward to dust around, I have to actually use a hoover to get the dust off of it, which is really annoying. And even though I'm using it pretty much every day, it still accumulates dust all over it. And it kind of, it's just one of those things, you know, you've got to keep on top of dust on your workstation anyway, but it is an absolute dust trap and you just can't just wipe it off. But that's one of those things you're going to have to kind of put up with, with no matter what you have, whether it's a keyboard or an editing console, they're going to catch dust. Now that I've slated everything about it and got all that out of the way, none of those things are actually major cons, you know, none of them are actually performance cons, which is always a good thing. So that leads us on to the pros of the Loop Deck Plus and why you would maybe get one in the first place. So right away, let's just start off with the obvious. This thing looks sick. Um, it is cool, it's a cool thing to have on the desk. It's kind of a bit different, you know, and that's always a bonus. There's no reason to actually buy something, but it is always a bonus to have it looking quite cool. So the biggest question around the Loop Deck and basically any editing console is the speed that it's gonna help you to edit. And the argument is, does it make you edit any faster? So is it actually worth getting or not? Personally, I don't think it makes you that much faster. And I think anyone claiming that it's gonna half your editing time is just flat out lying. And certainly at first when you get it, it actually slowed down my editing workflow because obviously you've got to get used to it. I've been so used to a keyboard 
buttons are laid out differently. You can customize them to how you want them. So the more you use it, you kind of get a little bit faster. And once you've kind of got it set up, debatably your editing can be a little bit faster. I think this is only down to, you don't have to hunt around for the menu so much. You can kind of just snap to whatever it is you want to do. So you don't spend too much time clicking and do drop downs and things. So debatably you can save a little bit of time in your editing workflow if you get really efficient with it, get it set up how you want it. But I think in terms of just plugging this in and start editing, it's, it's definitely not going to um, reduce your workflow that much. And it certainly isn't going to reduce it or half it. I wish it would, but it just won't. I don't think anything will though. I think that's kind of unfair to expect anything to actually half your workflow. Also, another cool feature for it though is all of these dials and all of the scrolls, if you actually click them in, it will basically reset those values to the base value. And that can actually save you a little bit of time. So say that you, your saturation was boosted right up to 100, say, um, and you wanted to reset it back to zero, you just click that in, whether you're on any kind of tab, you just click that and your saturation will reset back to zero. And that's sort of quite quick. It saves you having to find um, the saturation panel, either drag it back to zero or just double click it, will drag it back. But it just saves you that time of having to find it and you can just do it quite quickly. And you can do it from multiple ones very, very quickly. So the biggest thing for me, and actually the main factor why I love it, is because of the creative freedom that it gives you, especially when color grading your footage. What I mean by this is that you don't have to look at the sliders and the values anymore to actually color grade your footage. What I do is I blow the uh, image or the video up to full screen size, and then I can just edit the colors without even having to look at the slide bars or the values. And the benefit of doing that is because subconsciously when you're, maybe when you crush your shadows or your highlights or you boost your exposure right up to a number that's too high or maybe you put your contrast up to 50 or something you kind of think oh i shouldn't be up that high i shouldn't be editing it that much and that's kind of always in the back of your mind but when you can't even see it and you're just basing it purely off aesthetics and how the actual footage or the picture is looking that is what makes the biggest difference i don't care anymore what the values are as long as it looks the best that it can look and by doing that full screen you've obviously got it bigger to look at and you're not sort of held back by that subconscious feeling that you've edited it too much. So another kind of really obvious massive pro for this is that the dials are obviously a lot more accurate and fine tuned than you would be with your mouse or keyboard. So when you're editing your highlights or your vibrance, for example, you can really just tune it in by sort of one at a time and get those colors like perfect to how you want them. And you can also do multiple at the same time. So you could, you could boost your saturation and your vibrance at the same time, which you can't do with a keyboard and a mouse. You can only do one at a time. So it gives you a really different kind of outlook on the way that you color grade your either video footage or your pictures. This brings us on nicely to the customization and the compatibility options with this, which are actually insane. Um, the software that you can use this on is basically anything in the Adobe suite. Um, you can even use it with Final Cut Pro on the Mac. So I use this in Adobe Premiere Pro for my video editing and in Adobe Lightroom for my picture editing. So you can get this set up how you want it for using editing pictures in Lightroom. You can get all your presets set up on there. And then when you jump over to Premiere Pro, it remembers how you've had it set up for Premiere Pro and likewise when you go back to Lightroom. So it's not one setup for every piece of software you use it with and that's a really good thing about it. The customization options on this are endless basically. Every single button and every single dial can be adjusted to do whatever you want it to do regardless of what's actually printed on the loop deck. So obviously these have got shadows, highlights, vibrance printed on them but you can choose to ignore that and you can assign that to do whatever you want it to do. This thing is not just limited to color grading though. I also use this to sort of cut and ripple delete um, and scroll through and crop stuff as well. With all these control dials um, and main buttons over there, you can kind of actually customize each button to do what you want it to do. You can even export it or view it before and after. You know, so you're not just limited to color grading. You actually get these three levels built into the loop deck. At the push of a button, you can switch to the next level. So basically how you can have this set up if you choose to, is on level one, you can have it set up for all your color grading in Premiere Pro, say, and then you switch to level two, and now you've got all your buttons that are doing something completely different. Maybe it's ripple delete, maybe you're scrolling through footage, or cropping in or zooming in, and then you switch back to level one, and you can do your color grading again. So that is a really cool feature that you can have actually three levels of customization. So it's essentially like having three loop decks in one. So to kind of wrap up whether the loop deck is still worth having and whether it was worth buying in the first place, I think that is ultimately down to what you want it for. If you're looking for something that is 100% gonna speed up your editing workflow or reduce it by 50%, then you are gonna be disappointed with this because it is not gonna do that. Um, 
when you get to use it, maybe it will increase the speed of your editing, maybe by say 15, 20%, something like that. But if you're looking to actually half your workflow, then you need to hire somebody else to do that for you because this is not gonna be the answer to that problem. However, if you're looking at this from a color grading point of view and you're looking at something to enhance your color grading, this is definitely gonna help you do that because of the accuracy you can get with it. And like I said about not having to look at the values and the sliders, you can literally just edit to how it looks and that does open up a lot more doors. So I think if you're looking at it for a color grading point of view, this is definitely worth having. One thing that may put people off is the price point for one of these. Um, it is kind of pricey for what it actually does considering you can do all of this anyway with just a normal keyboard. But it's one of those things if you kind of want to take it to the next level. I wouldn't say it's a must have piece of equipment. I think if you're just starting out, I would say there's far more important things to get that are going to improve your overall videos or your pictures before one of these. But if you're at a stage where you kind of, you've kind of nailed your workflow and you kind of want to go to the next level, I would say that this is going to help you do that. I'm not going to say it's going to do it for you, but it's going to help you get to that next level and get a little bit more accuracy, especially in your color grading. So that is it for this video on the Loop Deck Plus. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it gave you a little bit of an insight as to whether this is for you or not, whether editing consoles in general is something you want to look at. Um, I will be doing a more in-depth video about all the sort of controls for this and how I use it with my workflow. So that will be coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Um, so yeah, that is it for this one though. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and make sure you subscribe. And once you've done all that, I'll see you in the next one.